Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth, my first time back after a couple of weeks not doing this and a week pretty much resting after Christmas. Eight o'clock, <clears throat> it's Tuesday, Tuesday the 3rd of January, as we're all getting back and thinking about going to school and work and the like. The words are the Church of England's web, Church of England um, Common Worship Daily Prayer on the Church of England's website and Arima's Daily Prayer. <coughs> if you're following the book, um, Morning and Evening Prayer or Daily Prayer, Church of England Common Worship, you'll find Morning Prayer Christmas season towards the beginning in the Morning and Evening Prayer during the seasons section. You may join me in the building, eight and six every day, as a rule now, and um, we're getting back into that practice and habit. Otherwise, Zoom, um, I, there's a Zoom code available on our website, uh, by the church's website and Facebook page. You may join by Zoom. Do let me know if you'd like me to send the code directly. <coughs> and uh, I'm recording the audio and will upload that onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. We're live streaming on our Blind Church's Facebook page, and that stays there as a video to, for you to watch at your leisure. So a number of different ways in which to engage. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth, to you be praise and glory forever. As your living word eternal in heaven assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh, may the light of your love be born in us, to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Verses from Isaiah 61 and 2. A song of the bride. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall exult in my God, who has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and has covered me with a cloak of integrity, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silence, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her deliverance shines out in the, like the dawn, and her salvation as a burning torch. <coughs> the nations shall see your deliverance, <coughs> and all rulers shall see your glory. Then you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of God will give. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, so God set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <coughs> no, let's just uh, switch yourself off, I think. <coughs> so to the Psalms, at the back of the book, if that's where you're following, those appointed this morning are numbers 127, 128, and 131. Okay. We open and close with the refrains we're given. We say the glory be after the last verse and pause to read the prayers that follow as we find them useful. 127, 128, and 131. The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you hasten to rise early and go so late to rest, eating the bread of toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. <coughs> Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, 
so are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they dispute with their enemies in the gate. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord! Blessed are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the toil of your hands. It shall go well with you, and happy shall you be. Your wife within your house shall be like a fruitful vine, your children round your table like fresh olive branches. Thus shall the one be blessed who fears the Lord. <coughs> the Lord from out of Zion bless you, that you may see Jerusalem in prosperity all the days of your life. May you see your children's children, and may there be peace upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord. <coughs> o Israel, trust in the Lord. O Lord, my heart is not proud, my eyes are not raised in haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters, with things that are too high for me. I have quieted and stilled my soul like a weaned child on its mother's breast, so my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, trust in the Lord from this time forth for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. O Israel, trust in the Lord. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, turning back in the book to morning prayer during Christmas season. <clears throat> a song of the Messiah. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, upon them the light has dawned. You have increased their joy and given them great gladness. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest. You have shattered the yoke that burdened them the collar that lay heavy on their shoulders. <clears throat> For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. <coughs> Isaiah 30, our first Bible reading, Isaiah Major Prophet, open prophecy section, which brings to an end the Hebrew Scriptures. <coughs> so if you've got a Bible in front of you, both the first and the second covenants in, open it about halfway through, and move towards the back. Isaiah is a fair-sized body of text, so you should find it, otherwise use an index. 60 is towards the end, chapter 60, large number at the head of paragraph towards the end, and small numbers in the text. The verses are 13 to the end. Isaiah 60 from 13. We scroll back a little from the canticle we just read, if we are following online. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. I will glorify where my feet rest. The descendants of those who oppress you shall come bending low to you, and all who despise you shall bow at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. <coughs> you shall suck the milk of nations and shall suck the breasts of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation, your gates praise. 
the sun shall no longer be your light by day, for, nor the, for brightness shall the moon give you light, give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, or your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light. And your days of mourning shall be ended, your people shall be righteous, they shall possess the land forever. They are the shoot that I planted, the work of my hands, so that I might be glorified. The least of them shall become a clan, the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord, in its time I will accomplish it quickly. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> so it's an assertion by the writers of the third part of Isaiah, students of the, sec the group that wrote the second, <coughs> or friends of at least writing in that same school, thought, thought world, who again developed their ideas from the writer, individual writer of the first part. And it's an encouragement to God's people that although they're going back to like Ukrainian refugees, back to a destroyed desolate land there is hope but there is also fear things are going to be different <coughs> a bit like going back to work after a holiday things sort of moved on some things will be the same <coughs> and so they're going back to their land after being in exile and uh, the lines in the first stanza as i have it which made me think well there are a couple first of all is these trees their land is an arid land a bit like moving to cornwall and seeing great tall trees for some of the greater english parks out on the moor tops. It's an impossibility, if you like, <clears throat> because of the climate, because of the type of soil, and yet God will be with them. Does this mean that these trees and their timber will be brought from the nations around, which was traditionally the case for building the temple, for example? The um, cedars came down from Lebanon, <clears throat> from Tyre and Sidon. Or will they actually grow? In which case we're moving on to much like the second stanza, that sort of slightly more um, apocalyptic, is that what I mean? Revelatory <coughs> uh, idea of end times rather than this sort of temporary restoration. The other thing in the first paragraph, which is more just a sort of passing saying really, suck the milk of nations, suck the breasts of kings. Obviously the word king there must also include um, female um, powers, rulers, <clears throat> and or it's figurative, which means that they will, uh, as a baby sucks the breast of a mother with breasts, or a person with breasts, I guess, we, um, one might say, but one way or another. <clears throat> so God's people will be nurtured and provided for um, by one with breasts providing for a child. Um, these rulers who would otherwise lord it over them are going to be that caring and prov prov providential. But it's that interesting idea that this is metaphor and we have to interpret it one way or the other. So it is with other scriptures that people might lean on slightly more forcibly to assert a particular opinion. Then the second stanza, and what I liked about the second stanza was that extended Hebrew um, repetition uh, I haven't got the verses, but it begins, the sun will no longer be your light by day, and then it ends, um, your days of mourning shall be ended. <clears throat> we've got uh, everlasting light repeated twice, and we've got the sun won't be your light by day, nor the moon by night repeated twice, using different words, because God will be God's people's light. And again, we're talking metaphor here. Will the sun actually and the moon actually stop working as they are? Will heaven be different in its organisation of time and calendar? I don't know. But what we do know is that we'll be able to see, find our way, plot our course, <coughs> using God rather than the lights in the heavens. Our second reading, John 1, 43 to the end, Gospel of John the fourth of the Gospels opening your second covenant. So if you are in a Bible and reading Isaiah in the book, uh, flick through towards the back. About two thirds of the way through, you'll come across the Greek scriptures opening with the Gospel of Matthew. Then it's Mark, Luke and John. We're looking for chapter one of John, large number, ahead of paragraph chapter one and small numbers in the text, verses 43 onwards. <coughs> we scroll onto it if we are reading online. 
The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, can any, anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to them, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. <clears throat> Here we have a similar kind of metaphorical overlaying of supernatural with the ordinary. <clears throat> and it's for us to interpret it as we will very ordinary apparently opening where um, we are told that uh, Jesus finds Philip says follow me Philip <clears throat> goes to find uh, Nathaniel and says we found him about him the Lord and the prophets wrote <clears throat> so Philip has had um, an encounter with Jesus Although Jesus says, follow me, he doesn't immediately go and follow him, he immediately goes and finds somebody else. But uh, <clears throat> that's something to hold up when we think about this uh, immediacy of our response to God's call, and particularly where some prophets in the Hebrew Scriptures and some others, even in the Gospels, are reprimanded for being tardy in their response. <clears throat> but uh, then, I don't know, later that day, some other time, <clears throat> excuse me, this Nathaniel meets um, after having a conversation of doubt and scepticism, meets Jesus and is immediately overwhelmed because Jesus says he knows him. Um, I don't know whether Jesus saw this Nathaniel in his mind's eye or whether he knew that Nathaniel was, I don't know, a seller of <coughs> wares and used to sit under a fig tree, might have sold figs, who knows. But uh, this Nathaniel, <coughs> having asserted that uh, he's not sure he's going to be discerning. Jesus recognises that in him. Here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And yet, despite that, he has this faith, grows immediately almost in him as he meets Jesus face to face. <coughs> and then we move on into these sort of slightly peculiar, terrifying, exciting realms where Jesus says, you will see angels coming up and down on the Son of Man. Son of Man was Jesus' name for himself. And what do we mean by angels here? Is this Jesus' death? Is this Jesus in glory after his death? <clears throat> is this an expression of strange happenings here and now? Uh, arguably, it could be all of these. May we be encouraged that angels are in God's under, on God, under God's authority direction, unless they're amongst that third that have fallen. <clears throat> and they, therefore, God's angels, will bring us help, sustenance, and succour. May we, as these early disciples, recognise our inadequacy, our naivety, <clears throat> our um, innocence, greenness, and be open to God acting in our time, in our day, miraculously. And may we test, may we encourage others to consider and test and recognise their scepticism as being a strength and not a weakness. To the responsory back in a morning prayer in during the Christmas season. The word of life which was from the beginning we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life which was from the beginning, that which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of life which was from the beginning we proclaim to you. The Song of Zechariah. To us is born a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and all the heavenly hosts now sing glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the hand of his servant, or born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, <clears throat> to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation 
by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. <coughs> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. To us is born a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and all the heavenly hosts now sing, Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. So World Council of Churches is our first port of call. As we turn to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in three, three in one, and dedicate ourselves to you in this day ahead, may the church be open to receiving blessings from um, what might be called secular powers, but from the communities within which we live, <coughs> those that sustain and support us in terms of people and uh, revenue and capital income. That we may continue to be a presence and a place and a, a service, a building, a space in the hearts and lives, in the landscape that stands for peace, truth, longevity, place, time amongst those communities. And may we be open to conversations about what faith may mean as we invite people to consider your claims and to respond to them, that the heavens may be opened to us. With the World Council of Church, we pray for Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine today. Lands and monuments sacred in the origins of Judaism, Christianity and Islam are items for which we are thankful. And we pray for the ending of the violence racking the region and that people might live together in peace, security and have respect for each other. From Christian Action Research and Education, may we, may we be encouraged for God's truth and demonstrating Christ's grace. We pray about those throughout the world in positions of leadership and power who reject and hate your ways of honesty, wisdom, justice and compassion for the poor and oppressed. Please bring down such wrongdoers and raise up others instead who will do good. <coughs> Just uh, opening green, green Christian uh, I used to be able to choose my attachment, so uh, apologies, I just got a new oh, there we go <coughs> one moment, so this is from the January prayer diary. Tuesday the 3rd. Green Christian. India is set to surpass China as the world's most populous country in 2023, each counting more than 1.4 billion residents this year. United Nations report said warning that high fertility could, would challenge economic growth. This is an occasion to celebrate our diversity, recognise our common humanity and marvel at advancements in health that have extended lifespans, dramatically reduced maternal and child mortality rates. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said in a statement, still a growing population was a reminder of a shared responsibility of care for the planet to reflect on where we still fall short in our commitments to one another. <coughs> he said, long-standing debate as to whether it's population, whether it's other matters, in my mind, to my mind, greed of uh, those who receive dividends from stocks and shares or uh, rely on their notional wealth. But this is uh, one of those sort of long-standing conversations within the sort of the green movement, should we limit population to maintain um, our ability to live on this earth. So we pray for those with who need it to have the wisdom to answer those questions. As the Anglican Communion, we have five marks of mission, the fifth of which, which is our concern for the environment, and Pope Francis has written this prayer, part of which reads, All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out on us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live, harming no one. <clears throat> and in our benefice cycle of prayer, we pray on Tuesdays for um, the various sectors, um, Local businesses, private, public, uh, people who look after road maintenance, bin collections, and our armed forces, is, uh, our armed forces and uh, emergency services, <clears throat> those who work in prisons, social work and the like. We pray a blessing on all of these and uh, alongside our charity section, which we come to you later in the uh, week. We pray a blessing. Uh, 
on them, the different ways they are governed, the different ways they make their decisions, but nevertheless we pray that they will continue to be sustained where they have, they make a valid contribution to our communities. And uh, we pray for those at the front line, those they serve, and those that are higher up with the arguably even more challenging decisions that have to be made about who they can care for, how much money they need, what services they have to cut to maintain um, a, a model that works for the time being. We thank God for the way all those different sectors work together for our communities where we are. We thank you for our people. Today we pray for Jason, the church warden here at St Mary's Halesworth, for the others on the PCC, for John the secretary, Karen the treasurer, uh, and the other uh, members on that committee. We pray for its growth, that uh, we'll be able to find another um, church warden, maybe another treasurer, uh, possibly another secretary, not because those that are doing the jobs at the moment are not up to it, but that that will increase our strength and power to deliver and do more as we need to to maintain and promote this building, what you stand for here, and support the other churches in the valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our humanity so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Rejoicing the presence of God here among us as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. <clears throat> give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye, let's join us on Facebook and YouTube. <laughs>